Hi guys, this is AS Chemistry, Organic Chemistry, and we are doing introduction to organic chemistry. Question one: The following compounds were all found to be components of a sample of petrol. So compound G is an alkane, compound H is an alkane, and compound J is an alcohol. Give the molecular formula of compound G. So the molecular formula is the sum of all the atoms present in the compound. So in total, the number of carbon atoms are one, two, three, four, C four. And hydrogen are three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, H ten. So the molecular formula of G is C four H ten. Give the empirical formula of compound H. So we'll need to find out the molecular formula to calculate the empirical formula. So the molecular formula of H is C three, C four, C five, C six, C seven, C eight. So in total, eight carbon atoms. And for hydrogen, three threes are nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and three to the six, twelve and six, eighteen, H eighteen. So if the empirical formula is C eight H eighteen, the molecular for uh, the molecular formula C eight H eighteen, the empirical formula would be this divided by two, which will give us C four H nine in the simplest ratio of carbon to hydrogen in compound H. So the empirical formula of H is C four H nine. Draw the skeletal formula of compound J. So compound J is one, two, three, a three carbon atom alcohol. So one, two, three, and we draw the OH here. And there is a methyl group on the first carbon atom, which contains the OH group. So this is the methyl group and on its adjacent carbon atom. So this is the methyl group on the second carbon atom. So this is the skeletal formula of compound J. Write an equation to represent the complete combustion of compound H. So the molecular formula of compound H is C8H18. So the combustion equation would have X plus Y upon 4 hydrogen. So X is 8. So 8 plus 18 upon 4. So that is 4 and a half. So this is 8 plus 4 and a half, which gives us 12 and a half moles of oxygen, giving us X moles of CO2, which is 8 moles of CO2, and Y upon 2 moles of H2O, which is 18 upon 2, which is 9 moles of H2O. So this is the complete combustion equation for compound H. Fossil fuels are often contaminated with sulfur. State and explain why supplies of fossil fuels that contain sulfur pose a problem to the environment. Sulfur in fuels when burnt in air is converted to SO2, when the fuel is combusted, and SO2 is converted to SO3 by atmospheric NO2. SO3 dissolves in rain water and is converted into H2SO4, which is the main contributor to acid rain. The boiling points of G, H and J are shown below. G has a boiling point of 0 degrees Celsius, H has a boiling point of 99 degrees Celsius and J has a boiling point of 112 degrees Celsius. Explain the difference in the boiling points of these three compounds. So G is C4H10, H is C8 
C8H18 and J is an alcohol. So explain the difference of the boiling point. So compound H has a higher MR than G and therefore has a greater number of London's dispersion forces present. So the greater the number of London's dispersion forces, the greater the amount of energy required in order to overcome them. So compound H has a higher MR than G and therefore has a greater number of London's dispersion forces due to the presence of a greater number of electrons. So this is the difference between compounds G and H. Now comparing H with J. Compound J has an OH group present because of which hydrogen bonding would be present between molecules of J. Hydrogen bonding is a much stronger intermolecular force of attraction and therefore would require much more energy to be overcome. And this energy would be provided in the form of heat. So a higher temperature, a higher boiling point for compound J due to the presence of hydrogen bonding between its molecules. Question two, six particles are listed. Uh, hydrogen uh, radical, H positive ion, chloride radical, chloride ion, methyl radical, methyl ion, uh, methyl cation. Identify two particles produced during the reaction of methane and chlorine in the presence of UV light. So in the presence of UV light, we can have the uh, availability of free radicals, which are chloride free radical and methyl free radical. These two radicals are possible when methane reacts with chlorine. Identify the two particles produced by the heterolytic fission of a bond in chloromethane. So when a bond in chloromethane is uh, broken heterolytically, it results in the formation of the methyl cation and the chloride anion. Chlorine being more electronegative will retain both the bonding electrons producing the anion or the nucleophile and methane uh, with the carbon chlorine bond broken heterolytically the carbon atom would lose its bonding electron forming the cation which is the electrophile and in this specific case it is the carbocation. Question 3. Methyl propane is an isomer of butane. Explain why methyl propane and butane are a pair of isomers. They have got 
द सेम नंबर of carbon and hydrogen atoms which means that they have the same molecular formula and compounds having the same molecular formula are isomers identify the type of isomerism shown by methyl propane and butane so butane is a straight chain of four carbon atoms while methyl propane is a straight chain of three carbon atoms with the second carbon atom having a substituted methyl group on it so this is an example of a chain isomer or chain isomerism which is a part of structural isomerism Question four: Oleic acid is the cis isomer, and elaidic acid is the trans isomer of the given compound. By using this formula, draw the structural formula of elaidic acid, clearly showing the stereochemistry. So we need to draw the trans isomer of this compound. So the trans isomer would mean that we've got a carbon double bonded to a carbon atom with one of the carbon atoms, hydrogen atom, on the upper side and the other having it on the lower side and the r groups will also be in opposite position so the r group for the carbon on the left would be ch2 seven times followed by a ch3 group and the r group on the right would be on top it is ch2 seven times and c double o h so this is the trans isomer of the given compound which is called elidic acid animal fats and vegetable oils can become rancid because of oxidation the rancid fat or oil has an unpleasant smell and taste antioxidants are used to prevent the spoilage of many food stuffs by oxidation one antioxidant that is widely used is vitamin c ascorbic acid and its formula is shown how many chiral carbon atoms are present in one molecule of ascorbic acid so in order to find out the number of chiral carbon atoms we need to see carbon atoms with four different groups attached to it so beginning from the top uh, the carbon with the oh then the ch2 then we have a carbon with an oh and two different r groups and an h so this is one of the chiral centers in this compound and the carbon right edges into this one at on the bottom of it is another chiral center so two chiral carbon atoms all the other carbon atoms are not chiral because they have double bonding present on them so these are the only two chiral centers present in ascorbic acid so uh, the number of chiral carbon atoms is two the ascorbic acid molecule contains three functional groups two of these are alcohol primary and secondary and alkene what is the name of the third functional group so the name of the third functional group which is being circled right now is a c double bond or next to an oxygen atom with both uh, the positions having r groups attached to it is an ester group so ascorbic acid also has an ester group present the compound trans 4 hydroxy 2 nonenal hne is thought to lead to infections of the lung when cigarettes are smoked and the structure of these compound are given uh, the skeletal formula and its condensed structural formula what is the empirical formula of trans 4 hydroxy 2 nonenal so what we need to do is we need to add together the number of carbon hydrogen and oxygen atoms present using the molecular formula so we have 4 plus 1 5 6 7 8 and 9 we have nine carbon atoms so hydrogen is 3 and 4 to the 8 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 24 25 26 27 28 
12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 16 hydrogen atoms present. And in total, we've got two oxygen atoms present. So this is the only way its formula can be represented. The molecular formula has to be its empirical formula. So the empirical formula of HNE is C9H16O2. HNE contains an alkene group. Name as fully as you can two other functional groups which are present in HNE molecule. So we've got the terminal C double bond O group present, which is the CHO group meaning it has got an aldehyde group present. And we have an OH group present on a carbon atom which is attached to two R groups. So this OH group is called a secondary alcohol. Secondary is important because the carbon with the OH group has got two R groups present attached to it, making it a secondary alcohol. Question six, fermentation of sugars by bacteria or molds produces many different organic compounds. One compound present in fermented molasses is 2-ethyl-3-methyl-butanoic acid, which gives a distinctive aroma to rum. And the structural formula in its condensed form is shown. What is the molecular formula of 2-ethyl-3-methyl-butanoic acid? So we need to add together the number of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen atoms. So totaling them, carbon 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. We've got 7 carbon atoms present. And the number of hydrogen atoms would be 3, 2, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 1, 14. H, 14. And there are two oxygen atoms present. So the molecular formula of this compound is C7H14O2. How many chiral carbon atoms are present in a molecule of 2-ethyl-3-methyl-butanoic acid? If none, write none. So the number of chiral carbon atoms present would be carbon atoms with four different groups attached to it. So beginning from the left, the first two groups are methyl groups, which cannot be chiral. Then we have a CH group, but there are two methyl groups attached to it. Then we have a CH group attached to an R group on one side, a C2H5 group on the other side, and a CWOH group on its fourth side. So this is a chiral carbon atom. So I've labeled it with an asterisk. The C2H5 will not be chiral. It's a, a carbon atom with two and a carbon atom with three hydrogen atoms. And the CWH has a double bond, so it cannot be chiral. So we only have one chiral carbon atom present in 2-ethyl-3-methyl-butanoic acid. An isomer of 2-ethyl-3-methyl-butanoic acid, which is an ethyl ester, that means the alcohol portion is an ethyl group, is a very strong smelling compound which is found in some wines. This ethyl ester contains a branched hydrocarbon chain and is chiral. So it, this will not be the ethyl portion of the ester. Draw the displayed formula of this ethyl ester and identify the chiral carbon atom with an asterisk. So we have uh, an ester bond to which on one side we have got an ethyl group present, CH2 and CH3, that is the alcohol portion, and it's supposed to be 2-ethyl-3-methyl-butanoic acid. So it's a butanoic acid, so C... H2, CH2, and CH3. And it needs to have an ethyl group, uh, a, meth a methyl group actually present so that it is converted into a chiral carbon atom. So it cannot be the carbon atom, which is a CHC group in the acidic portion. It can be, no, it cannot be the CH2 adjacent to it because then that carbon will have two methyl groups. So it has to be the third carbon atom from the left so that we have four different groups present on it. So now to make these structures in their displayed form, so we will have 
two carbon atoms in the alcohol portion of the ester. So that would be CH2 and CH3. This is the displayed form. And on the acid portion, we've got a hydrogen, a methyl group. Then in the straight chain, we have a CH2 group followed by a CH3 group. So this is the displayed formula of the ester. And we need to mark the chiral carbon atom with an asterisk. So that is being done right now. So this is the chiral carbon atom that has been marked with an asterisk. And this is the isomer of 2-ethyl-3-methyl-butanoic acid containing a chiral carbon atom. Question seven. Analysis of another organic compound B gave the following composition by mass. Carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen percentages are provided. Use these values to calculate the empirical formula of B. So we have carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen present. So the percentages are carbon is 64.86, hydrogen is 13.50, and oxygen is 21.64. The first step is to divide these by their AR value. So carbon is 12, hydrogen is 1, and oxygen is 16, which gives us a ratio of uh, 5.41 for carbon. We've got a ratio of 13. 0.50 for hydrogen and 1.35 for oxygen. The next step would be to divide these values by the simplest ratio, which is 1.35. So divide each value by 1.35. Gives us a carbon to hydrogen to oxygen ratio of 4 is to 10 is to 1. Therefore, the empirical formula of the given compound is C4H10O. The empirical and molecular formula of B are the same. B is found to be chiral. Draw the displayed formula of the two optical isomers of this compound indicating with an asterisk the chiral carbon atom. So we will have an alcohol because C4H10O is the molecular formula for an alcohol because a single O is present and C4H10 is the number of carbon and hydrogen atoms in an alkane. So an alcohol has the same number of carbon and hydrogen atoms as an alkane with the addition of an oxygen atom. So C4H10O is an alcohol, but this alcohol should have four different groups present on it. So in order to make this alcohol, we will have a central carbon atom to which we will have four different groups attached. One of these groups can be a hydrogen atom, which we can place at the top. And one of them can be an OH group, which can be placed at the bottom. Then we need to place two other groups, which are different from each other, but they are made up of three carbon atoms and eight hydrogen atoms because two of the hydrogen atoms have been used up in order to place the OH and the H atoms on two different bonds on carbon. So if we make one of these groups as a CH3 group, so what remains is CH2 and CH3, which makes in total four different types of groups single bonded to the chiral carbon atom. So this is the alcohol that forms a chiral center in which we have two optical isomers present. And we need to mark with an asterisk the chiral carbon atom. So this is the chiral carbon atom on the uh, isomer on the left and this is the chiral carbon atom on the isomer on the right. There are three other structural isomers of B which are not chiral but which contain the same functional group as B. That means they are alcohols. In the boxes below, draw the structural formula of these alcohols. So we can have 
primary alcohol, a straight chain primary alcohol, CH3, CH2, CH2, CH2OH. This can be a primary alcohol. And we can have a tertiary alcohol in which we have CH3, CH3, CH3 attached to the same carbon atom to which the OH group is attached. And we can have uh, an alcohol with three carbon atoms in its chain, CH3, CH, CH2, OH, with the alcohol as a primary alcohol, but one of the carbon atoms as a substitute group on the third carbon atom, CH3. So here we have three different isomers of B. When naming them, the one that forms the optical isomers is butane, to all the first one on the left is butane one all the one in the center is two methyl propane two all and the one on the right is three methyl propane one all so these are the name of four different isomers of an alcohol with the molecular formula C4H10O. Question eight. The structural formulae of six different compounds P to U are given below. Okay, P is an alkene. Q is a ketone. R is an alkene. S is a primary alcohol, T is a secondary alcohol, and U is an ether. What is the empirical formula of T? So in order to find the empirical formula, we need to find the molecular formula. So let's add together the number of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen atoms. So 1, 2, 3, and 4. We've got C4, hydrogen, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, H10. And we've got oxygen one and two. We've got two oxygen atoms. So simplification of this formula gives us C2H5O, which will be the empirical formula of compound T. Draw the scalar formula of compound S. Compound S is a straight chain Alcohol having 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 carbon atoms. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 carbon atoms with an OH group attached to the terminal carbon. This is the skeletal formula of compound S. Compounds S and U are isomers. What type of isomerism do they show? So S is a primary alcohol and U is an ether. So they have different functional groups. So the type of isomerism that they're showing is functional isomerism, which is a type of structural isomerism. Two of the six formula P to U can each be drawn in two forms which are known as stereoisomers. Which two compounds have formulae that can be drawn in two forms? What type of stereoisomerism does each show identify each compound by its letter? So we are supposed to look at stereoisomers. So if we look at compound P, we have got two carbon atoms with hydrogens on them and a double bond between them. So P is capable of showing cis trans isomerism. So the first compound is compound P and the type of pseudo isomerism is cis trans or we can call it geometric isomerism. So that is the first compound that we have obtained in compound Q. It's a symmetrical ketone, so no type of isomerism in compound R, there is a double bond, but 
the carbon atom on the left side of the double bond has two hydrogen atoms on it so cannot show cisterns isomerism compound s is a straight chain alcohol with no double bonds and no chiral centers compound t has got a chiral carbon atom marked with an asterisk this carbon atom is bonded to a hydrogen a methyl group and an oh group on three of its bonding positions and on the fourth position it has a ch2 ch2 oh group making it an r group so four different groups attached to a carbon atom making it a chiral carbon and a chiral carbon containing compound is capable of showing optical isomerism so compound q this is not compound q this is compound t compound t can show optical isomerism now looking at compound u it is an ether so there are no carbon atoms with which are chiral and there are no double bonds present so compound u will not show any type of stereoisomerism so the final conclusion is compound P will show cis-trans isomerism and compound T will show optical isomerism. Question nine, malic acid has the structural formula given. Malic acid is chiral. Draw fully displayed formula of the two optical isomers of malic acid indicate with an asterisk the chiral carbon atom. So a chiral carbon atom is a carbon atom with four different groups bonded to it. And in its 3D structure, the groups that are represented above and below the carbon atom stay the same in both the isomers, while the groups represented on the left and the right side of the carbon atom are switched between the two optical isomers. So the chiral carbon atom being the CH carbon atom underlined with a dash in red. So we will place a hydrogen atom above the carbon atom, the OH group below it, the C double OH group to the right side of the isomer on the left. So it will be on the left side of the isomer on the right. And on the remaining positions, we have got CH2, C double H group present. So CH2, C double OH on the left side of the isomer on the left and CH2, C double OH on the right side of the isomer on the right. And we are supposed to label the chiral carbon atom with an asterisk. So this is the chiral carbon atom in each of the two optical isomers. Compound C also shows stereoisomerism. Now compound C is a symmetrical alkene in which the two carbon atoms having a double bond between them have a hydrogen and a C double H group each. Draw the scheduled formula of each of the stereo isomers of C and label each isomer. So scheduled formula. So in order to draw the scheduled formula, we have a double bond with a CHC group on one side and no, not a CHC group, it's both, both groups are C double. So C double OH on the same side results in the formation of a cis isomer and the C double OH group on opposite sides of the double bond will result in the formation of the trans isomer of compound C. So this is the trans isomer. draw the skeletal formula. So these are the skeletal formula of the cis and the trans isomers of compound C. The food additive E330 is another organic compound which occurs naturally in fruit. E330 has the following composition by mass. Carbon, hydrogen and oxygen atom percentages are given. Calculate the empirical formula of E330. So carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. Percentages of carbon, hydrogen and oxygen are provided. 37.5% carbon, 4.17% hydrogen and 58.3% oxygen. The first step is to divide these percentages by the AR of these elements. So 12, 1 and 16. This gives us a ratio of carbon being 3.13 hydrogen being 4.17 and oxygen being 
six four. The next step is to divide these ratios by the simplest uh, number, the smallest out of these three, which is three point one three. So three point one three, three point one three, and three point one three. This gives us a carbon is to hydrogen is to oxygen ratio of one is to one point three three is to one point one six. So in order to convert this into a whole number ratio, we multiply these ratios by six, which gives us a ratio of six is to eight is to seven, making the empirical formula of this compound as C6H8O7. Question 10. DME or dimethyl ether. DME and ethanol are isomers with the molecular formula C2H6O. Draw the displayed formula of DME and of ethanol. So DME is CH3, single bond O, CH3. So this is the displayed formula of dimethyl ether. And the displayed formula of ethanol would be CH3, CH2, OH. So this is the displayed formula of ethanol with CH3, CH2, and OH being displayed. What type of isomerism do DME and ethanol show? DME and ethanol are both functional isomers which is a part of structural isomerism. Question 11. Proton aldehyde, the structure is given, occurs in soya bean oils. Proton aldehyde exists in more than one stereoisomeric form. Draw the displayed formula of the stereoisomers of proton aldehyde and label each isomer. So, as we can see, proton aldehyde has a double bond with a hydrogen atom present on both the carbon atoms forming the double bond. So, this will show cis trans isomerism. So, we need to show the displayed formula. So, we will draw C double bond C. In the cis isomer, the hydrogen atoms will be on the same side and the opposite side would have a CH3 group on one carbon atom and a CHO group on the second carbon atom. So this is the cis isomer of proton aldehyde. As for the trans isomer, the positions of one of the groups on one of the, uh, of both the groups on one of the carbon atoms can be switched. So let's switch CH3 and H. So we've got CH3 in this position now, hydrogen at the bottom. On the second carbon atom, hydrogen stays at top and CHO group stays at the bottom. And this is the structure of the trans isomer of proton aldehyde. Draw the scheduled formula of proton aldehyde. So the scheduled formula of proton aldehyde would have one, two, three, four carbon atoms. So four carbon atoms. The fourth carbon atom has a double bond O on it because it is the aldehyde group. So double bond O, which is actually the first carbon atom as far as nomenclature is concerned. So the double bond is present between the second and the third carbon atom. So there is a double bond present between these two carbon atoms. So this is the structure of proton aldehyde in its skeletal formula. Question 12. Protyl alcohol, the structure is given, is a colorless liquid which is used as a solvent. Draw the displayed formula of the organic compound form when protyl alcohol is reacted with cold dilute acidified potassium manganate 7. So if it's cold dilute acidified, then it would result in the double bond uh, being converted into two single bonds on both the carbon atoms between which they, the double bond was present and attachment of an OH group to both of the carbon atoms. So the CH double bond CH will convert into CHOH and CHOH. And we are supposed to draw the displayed formula. So one, two, three, 
फोर कार्बन आइटम्स वन टू थ्री फोर थ्री हाइड्रोजन आइटम्स ऑन द कार्बन ऑन द लेफ्ट सो सी एच थ्री वन हाइड्रोजन आइटम ऑन द सेकेंड एंड द थर्ड कार्बन आइटम्स टू हाइड्रोजन आइटम्स ऑन द फोर्थ कार्बन आइटम विद एन ओ एच ग्रुप दैट वॉज ऑलरेडी प्रेजेंट एंड एडिशनल ओ एच ग्रुप ऑन द सेकेंड एंड द थर्ड कार्बन आइटम विच इज द रिजल्ट ऑफ द रिएक्शन विद कोल्ड डायल्यूट एसिडिफाइड पोटेशियम मैंगनेट सेवन Draw the scheduled formula of the compound formed in reaction E. So this is referring to some reaction that is not shown here. If I am correct, reaction E was oxidation of protyl alcohol with K two Cr two O seven, and that would result in the CH two OH group being converted into a C double OH group. So what we are supposed to do is we are supposed to make the product of the reaction of protyl alcohol upon oxidation with K two Cr two O seven under acidic conditions. So the product would be, and it's a scalar formula. So one, two, three, four carbon atoms. These are the four carbon atoms. With a double bond O and a single bond OH at the terminal carbon, which was CH two OH initially, and this is bonded to a CH group, which is double bonded to another CH group. So this is the double bond, and at the chain ends in a CH three group. So this is the scattered formula of the compound formed in reaction E, which is reaction. With acidified K two Cr two O seven. Compound P is another unsaturated compound. is found in some blue cheeses. The percentage composition by mass of compound P is carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and the percentages are provided. Calculate the empirical formula of compound P. So this will be done by Using the percentages provided and dividing them by the atomic masses of the three elements. So, percentage of carbon is seventy three point seven, hydrogen is twelve point three, and oxygen is fourteen point zero. We divide carbon by twelve, hydrogen by one, and oxygen by sixteen. This gives us a ratio of carbon six point one four, hydrogen as twelve point three, and oxygen as 0.875 the next step is to divide these ratios by the smallest number out of these three which is 0.875 so we divide each of these values by 0.875 which would give us a ratio of carbon is to hydrogen is to oxygen as 7 Is to fourteen, is to one. Therefore, the empirical formula of compound P is C seven H fourteen O.